Hey everyone, welcome to the Namra Podcast. Russ Mangson here with Taylor Casciola. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about how to make a post go viral and some of the common traits that all viral posts have. Let's get right into it. All right. So we're, we're uh, breaking our own rule today. Okay. We're, yes. uh, we're going to talk about what goes into a viral post and what you can do if you really did want to go viral because we get asked about it all the time so we always say you know disclaimer don't that is a bad goal trying to go viral is a bad goal we've talked about it at length but if you did want to try it's good to at least know and you have to understand the rules before you can break them obviously so let's kind of go into that what um and, and what <laughs> i think we should talk about what kind of made this come top of mind for us I think you said it right. It's something that everybody asks us or like in the back of their minds, that's what they want to happen. Like yeah. whether they admit it or not, everybody sort of wants. They'll like say, no, it's fine. I'm not to expecting to go viral, but, but maybe, <laughs> but, maybe. <laughs> but maybe, exactly. Yeah. And uh, also that kid on uh, Instagram, that you sent <laughs> oh, yeah. Me. yeah. Yeah. So there's this kid on Instagram. Maybe we can put like a screenshot of the post in. Um, I, bet a ton of people have seen it because yeah. it is truly like a completely viral post i saw it like two months ago i yep. keep seeing it uh but this kid just put up like a like <laughs> it's adorable like 10 year old kid, he's like, like thir- 13 year old kid front yard yeah. puts his phone up and goes i will do whatever <laughs> the top comment <laughs> tells me to do on this post and it just was right timing right kid <laughs> like uh, it was just right one of those it was one of those internet moments that yeah. kind of like everyone's like all right let's this is what yeah. we choose <laughs> you know, the internet yeah. all agreed yeah um, it, and it is a little bit of luck that you know uh, allows you to get chosen yeah but but we want to kind of dive into it like let's yeah. actually break this down and look at it and explain like why this one because that's kind of if if you don't look closely you might just think it's all luck like right. it's all luck the internet chooses someone or something and just makes it go viral but i think we all kind of like know in the back of our heads that's not true like there is a secret kind of sauce that goes into this some of it is absolutely luck but like let's kind of break down like what would you say like the biggest core tenants like the pillars of like all viral vi- uh, videos what, what are those things yeah so well, let's go into the whole list after we talk a little bit more about this one just so people have some context this one went viral because of the prompt to comment mm-hmm. the top comment i'll do whatever it says yeah so people went nuts uh with I, like ideas of like telling this kid what to do the top one ended up telling him to like go to thailand get a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt win the title come back to america write a book about it have that book become a bestseller like it was just some so the comment went viral comment. as well so that's that a comment viral comment viral. within a viral video. and there's yeah. you know for for that you know, one that became the actual top comment, which has probably a hundred thousand likes on yeah. the comment itself. Um, there's like, I think 50,000 comments on that post. Yeah. And so that's what did it. Like for that one, it was like just this perfect prompt for engagement. Sort of like every algorithm hacking on. where it's like, you know, oh, like Instagram sees a ton of engagement on this video, a ton of views. So it's like, okay, I guess people like this. Let's put it out there more. And that's kind of a a big part of it too. Yep. And so that is one of the eight pillars to a social, to to a viral post that we're going to touch on in this list. So, which is what? Engagement engagement. and interactivity. So some sort of prompt, like if you comment here, this will happen a contest or whatever it is, (laughs) I'll do whatever you tell me to do. (laughs) That's what did it for this kid. So I'm just going to run through the whole list and we can touch on Mm -hmm. them as it feels appropriate. So emotional resonance, which means that it just evokes strong emotion. Yeah. Inspire or something along those lines. Make people have a connection to it. Feel like they're part of it. Yeah, exactly. And it it could make you really happy or it could piss you off either way. Like that, that is, you know, those are sort of the two (laughs) types of viral, like emotional wise Um, relevance and timeliness, like a comment on a recent, uh, news story mm-hmm. or, or something that's that is relevant authenticity and originality something we talk about all the time uh, just being authentic people appreciate raw moments yeah. so if you can show your real self that those typically do well engagement and interactivity which we already talked about visual appeal strong visuals just something mm-hmm. that looks amazing uh, or horrible <laughs> yeah um, simplicity and clarity another thing that we talk about often get as much information 
in as small of a package as possible, get it into my brain as quickly as possible. Yep, 100%. Economy of words, huge. Uh, community and identity, just content that resonates with a particular group. Your audience, uh, yeah, your target yeah. audience. So, right? you know, a local uh, local event post is going to do very, very well locally. Yeah, and I think, like, viral. a big part of, like, going viral, you have to define it. Like, what do you define as viral? Are you going viral locally, going viral nationally? internationally what is it yeah. because that, like point, you said stops. Right, right, yeah <laughs> the, the biggest like stops. resonate so with far does the wave yeah go? your community could be like people in general or men and then a smaller subset could be like Rhode Island people in this industry so you have to resonate with some kind of audience on like a meaningful level yep love it and then the last one is platform adapt uh, adaptability mm -hmm. which obviously we talk about a lot just in terms of the content creation logistics shooting for different formats and things like that but that's yeah you know is it low friction is it easily used am i gonna see it through my feed does it make sense that sort of thing yep and it doesn't work on all platforms yeah. like do you have the formatting right yep because uh, that is huge too so those are really the things that you want to consider and, and aside from that hilarious post by the kid the other thing that prompted us to talk about this was just working with clients because yeah. obviously like you can't just <laughs> determine your social media strategy based off of those eight things or else yeah. you're going to start doing some crazy things. Yep. Because like, I think a regular post, like we try to do like a good post does a few of those. Well, mm -hmm. a great post does a lot of them. Well, and then a viral post does every single one of them perfectly. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think gets that's lucky and gets lucky. Yeah. Like that is kind of the definition of a viral post doing all eight of those things really freaking well and getting lucky. Like that's where, where the kind of magic sauce comes in. So the question is, how does a business that needs to remain professional can't just say something inflammatory to mm -hmm. invoke uh, an emotional anger response uh, has to you know, abide to compliance yeah. and just remain professional? Well, that's <laughs> the reason why, like, have you ever seen a business profile go viral? Like, have you ever seen a like a, a meme from Walmart take over the Internet or a meme from like Home Goods Facebook page take over the Internet? Not like, no, because <laughs> we can't. We have to play within a set of rules yeah. when it comes to professional branding. Some individuals, maybe yes. But yeah. that's like I think that's the perfect thing right there that you said is like, how do we do that within like the bounds of like being sane and rational? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really good question. Yeah. And, and that's a question a lot of people ask. And I, I think the answer to it is understanding like what you said, like what do we mean by viral? Yeah. Because a post can do really vet really well and get 20 shares yep. and it's like perfectly viral for like what your expectations should be, yeah. you know, in your industry based on, you know, yeah, just what the reasonable expectations, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that should be viewed as success and the content strategy should be built around getting that, like mm -hmm. just, just appealing to those 20 people and like consolidating your audience to that tighter yeah. community is what will allow you to become more relatable and increase the odds that you do start producing content that's more shareable mm -hmm. and could go like viral in your industry. And I think a lot of these things, like if you just look at the, like you can look at the past 10 like viral trends or whatever it is. Like one thing that sticks in my mind because I was like just going into college when it happened was like the ALS ice bucket challenge. Mm -hmm. Like that was like a viral trend that cascaded off of a viral like post where someone mm -hmm. put it out there. And it had like all of those same things in it, right? Um, it impacts people, it's shareable, like it engages the audience, like it builds community, like all of those things. But mm -hmm. like you can't, it's really hard to manufacture something like that. Right. It's really mm -hmm. hard to do that. That's why it is a one in a million. All right. So we've kind of like looked at all those different things. And I, I think it's valuable to actually discuss it on the podcast one so you can see like what it takes to kind of go viral, so to speak. But you can also take all of those insights that we just talked about and incorporate them piece by piece into your own content strategy. Because if you try to do all those things well without being slapstick or stupid or ruining your brand, like it will help you g create a better post. You know, like a lot of those are just like best practices when it comes to creating content and coming up with ideas for content. I like saw, all of those are just a really good idea to include and incorporate in your content. Yeah, I saw actually a perfect post and I saved it specifically for the podcast. I'm glad you brought that up. Hang on. So he, he's uh, got a whiteboard and he's just like pulling cardboard off of like the answers. Oh yeah, I've read. seen that guy. He's good. So, uh, if you have a low amount of likes, you have a bad idea. If you have a low amount of comments, you have no emotion. 
if you have bad average reach or, or uh, bad average engagement, people aren't watching your videos, you have a bad hook on mm -hmm. the video. If you have a low amount of shares, then it's not relatable enough. And if you have a low amount of saves, like I just saved his video and pulled it up yep. on Instagram, so good on him. Uh, but if you don't have, like no one's saving your videos, it means you're not, not providing enough value, value or information. Yeah. So I think that's a really good way to look at all of these things that we mentioned and say like, all right, well, where am I weak? Like, you know, I feel yeah. like we're putting up good stuff, but maybe we're not getting enough comments or we're not getting enough likes. How do we like mm -hmm. actively start to brainstorm in, in the proper direction. Yeah, it's a good checklist. Okay, cool. Let's cover a couple Instagram updates that have been pretty noticeable the last like few weeks, just like they're moving buttons around a ton. So just a reminder <laughs> to yeah. everybody to stay patient. Don't get angry. I did <laughs> yeah. when I first tried to uh, copy the link of a post and it accident like I accidentally shared something to meta or like didn't actually share it, yeah. but it pulled meta up because yeah. that's where the button used to be. Yeah. And then I also wanted to go over some uh, best practices regarding uh, like heavily regulated industries. So like if going viral is not mm. really like if you are a business in a boring industry or somewhere that's like heavily regulated where you can't just say anything out there, you still can put out good content. Uh, you just have to change up your mindset a little bit. So a lot of the different things that we see are just like, well, I can't really post anything like unique or off the cuff. So I just don't even do it. And that's, that's honestly a, a, a big mistake because with just a little bit of extra thought and putting in a little bit of work ahead of time to make sure everything's approved by, you know, um, your compliance officer, whoever it is, you can still put out good content. Um, you might not get that viral post, but you can still put out valuable contents to your audience. And I think it goes back to that word right there, value. So if you're in a boring or heavy, heavily regulated industry, it just takes more time up front to schedule and plan things out and get it approved, but you can still put out content. Um, some key examples of that are like, there are there are a million different blog topics or articles on everything related to finance, attorneys, lawyers, that sort of thing. There are a million content like blogs out there. So if you can just take those different pre-approved blogs and turn those into content, you they've already done the hard work of getting it approved for you. So if you come out with a 1200 word uh, article or blog, turn that into a video, literally transcribe it, put yourself on camera, read it, and then publish it. Okay. And then cut it up into clips for social media. You can do that as well. It's the same exact content. The only thing that's changed is the medium. And as long as you read that verbatim, you have video content right mm -hmm. there. Some other things, highlight testimonials. As long as you're not guaranteeing some sort of outcome is gonna be the same for you, and as long as you put in some caveat uh, legal jargon, mm -hmm. you can do a lot of those same things, like yeah. testimonials, meet the team, about us. Um, frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Those are huge. All uh, like, uh, did you know this or did mm -hmm. you know that? Or how much do you guys this? Yeah. Like you, just a question that could prompt some comments and some engagement. Like there's mm -hmm. ways that you can innocently still Ooh. say things that are prompting comments or prompting, you know, share this with your friends in, in a, you know, you have to work with your compliance team and figure it out, but it is mm -hmm. worth the legwork up front to figure out like what you can and can't do. Yeah, I think it makes sense to say like in those heavily regulated industries, instead of having the entire conversation in the post, just get the conversation started. Have you thought about this? And then don't give any type of like definitive answer start the conversation and then have your hook, your call to action a little bit early so that you don't have to get hung up on that mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, have you thought about this? Okay start the conversation, reach out to us if you're interested. That's yep. a great way to be vague, but also not like too much bullshit that like people are right. like, this is nothing. Right. Get the conversation started, finish it later in your sales process. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. And this is where obviously we can go down a rabbit hole brainstorming, like all of the different ideas mm -hmm. in different industries. So if you guys do need help, that that is what we're here for. Feel yep. free to reach out. We'll get we the can. conversation started, not finish it right now. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and that's pretty um, much everything that I had. Uh, let's see. Shout out to the quarter nine regional chamber of commerce um, for having me as part of one of their success express workshops. Um, I did a class um, talking about how to leverage social media to accomplish your business goals. So shout out to them for having me on. Um, like 40, how'd it go? 45 people came on nice. zoom. It was really That's good. Awesome. Yeah. On zoom. Wow. Um, as I was putting this, uh, presentation together, we talked about it on one of the recent episodes of the podcast as well. 
with like the the patience curve and everything. Did you record so it? That was a big. Yep, we recorded nice. it in the studio and the Zoom is recorded. So we're gonna sweet. We're, we'll put the whole thing out um, on social media at some point. Might end up on the quarter nine page. So stay yep. tuned. But I'll share it obviously. But anyway, the overarching themes were that curve, which we've talked about already, and then getting off of the treadmill of like the, these uh the insecure marketing plan for six months and then restarting and then another insecure marketing plan for six more months yeah. and then so getting off of that treadmill and that seemed to really resonate with the people in the audience i did a marketing with russ show this morning mm-hmm. and the uh my guest caller um that treadmill thing seemed to resonate with her yeah. a ton as well and I think a lot of people are in this boat where they just are re-strategizing every six months or 12 months because they are insecure in their long-term direction. They don't know how to truly build towards like this true north. Yep. Um, and so this is a concept that I don't want to get too much into uh, on this episode because we want to just get it going. But if you feel like you're on a treadmill, <laughs> stay yeah. tuned because yeah. we'll talk more about that in the future. It seems like it's a hot button topic for a lot of like, especially solopreneurs, like realtors, like people who are yeah. in the beginning stages of, of getting marketing going for themselves. Um, uh, reminder that 2024 marketing starts now yeah. uh, Absolutely. or even a month ago. <laughs> uh when this podcast comes out um, and just keep planning ahead, keep planning three or six months out yeah. <laughs> always uh, just saying that because this is, it's holiday season. Yeah. So this and don't is, use, well, I, I always like tell people like, don't use round numbers as an excuse. So it's like, just because you missed the January one deadline or whatever, it's coming up too quick. True. There's no reason why you can't start your marketing in February 14th. Like it doesn't right, right, matter. Right. It's better but to it's like launch get it done properly. Yes. Get it done properly. And then because you can just have your marketing year from February to February, you know, it doesn't matter about that. So don't be discouraged if the holidays caught up on you and now you have to put, just get started now. It's just yep. like a workout program. We always talk about that. Just do it now. Yeah. That's pretty much all I had. Only other thing I will say is just plug, uh, the marketing with Russ show. Yeah. Uh, where if you do want to dive deeper with me, um, I'm opening our office hours in the Namra studio from nine to 11 AM every other Friday. Um, I've got a booking link if you're interested in calling in and just having a really raw, authentic brainstorming session with me where I give away as much free advice as I can possibly give you in in an hour. Um, We've done a few episodes, a couple pilot episodes, Mm -hmm. and today was kind of like the first official one where I had a felt like I had a good flow going. Good. Um, So if you're interested, reach out to me, russ at namraconsulting.com or reach out on Instagram, namra page, my page, and we'll help you out. Yeah, we'll stay tuned for more of that. So. Great job. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the uh, next episode. Stay tuned.